Acorn have created computer solutions to help parents help their children. And with prices starting from just £399, it could be an invaluable investment in your child's future. If, like me, you went to school sometime around the early to mid-90s, there's a strong chance the first computer you ever used was a BBC Micro or an Acorn Archimedes. We had both when I was at primary school, and I have fond memories of using the BBC Micro to make a rather demonic looking turtle draw shapes on the ground, as well as discovering the lander demo on a shiny new Archimedes computer that was put into our classroom. I've never used one since, so I've definitely been on the lookout for one. Sadly nowadays the Archimedes commands some pretty high prices. Well, I've managed to find one. This particular Archimedes has been stored in an old lady's attic since the mid-90s, so we'll certainly need to check it over before we can use it. There's one thing I'm dreading the most, battery leakage. Looking around the internet, there's plenty of horror stories from people who've opened their computers to find the battery has eaten its way through a good chunk of the motherboard and surrounding components. There's really no way of knowing how this Archimedes has fared, and what 20 years of being hidden away in an attic has done to it. So let's not put it off any further, in we go. As with many of the 80s and 90s era machines, the A3010 is nice and easy to disassemble. Just three screws along the front bottom edge of the case, followed by a row of clips on the rear of the machine. With the top of the machine removed, we get our first glimpse of the inside, and so far, things are looking promising. Next, we need to remove the two ribbon cables for the keyboard. Allowing it to gently slide out. The metal shielding is the next thing to be removed. That's held in by three more screws, one of which is an incredibly tight hex screw. The floppy disk is actually mounted to the shielding, so we need to remove the cables for that too. One last cable to be removed, and that's for the A3010's built-in speaker. With everything out of the way we can get a proper look inside, and it's looking very clean indeed. Looking at the battery, we can see that time really has been kind to this Archimedes. There's virtually no battery leakage to speak of. And whilst we're very grateful the battery hasn't caused more damage, I think we can safely say it's been in there for long enough. With the battery removed, we can see that there's only one trace that looks like it may need some attention. Time for a quick check around the rest of the board. I'm pleased to say that it's looking very clean, no signs of corrosion or leakage here. With the top of the board looking okay for now, it's just time to make sure that none of the battery leakage has made its way through to the bottom. To remove the rest of the shielding, we just need to remove the bolts which are screwed into the I.O. ports on the back. Not forgetting the nuts that holds the audio socket in place. Then the power lead connection to the board. So let's go ahead and desolder the remaining battery legs and give the area a good clean.
I wasn't going to replace the battery as I'm not worried about this machine keeping time or settings, but I do have a spare AAA battery holder lying around. And legend has it, or rather the technical document for this machine, that the RTC chip can actually run on 1.2 volts. So let's give it a go. And all done. And before we put everything back together, let's give this Acorn computer a much deserved clean. The production dates on the chips and power supply date this machine to around mid-1992. I'd say it's not looking bad for 28 years old. Here seems like a good place for our new battery. now just for the remaining bits. Slow equal pressure on either side of the keyboard connectors and they'll gently fit into place. Our last three screws in, and this Archimedes is now ready to test. It's been the best part of 25 years since I've used an Acorn computer, and even then I was probably about 6 years old. Luckily for me this Archimedes has brought its own guide along. Welcome to this real-time audio disc introduction to RISC OS. These tape and disc materials have been designed to give you a clear insight into how your new Acorn computer works. But above all, we want to put you in the driving seat from the start. By the end, you'll have tried everything out for yourself, and you'll be well on the way to using your Acorn computer the way the experts use it. OK, so we're not going to sit through all of that. Though I can imagine lots of people did in the early 90s. Sitting down with a cup of tea and popping those cassettes on. Probably having never used a computer before. So our A3010 has passed the power on test, but I'm not really sure what to do here. I was hoping to see the familiar looking RISC OS. Maybe our Acorn guide can help us out. First, switch on your monitor. OK. And then hold down the letter R on your keyboard. Yep. And still keeping it held down, switch on the computer itself. Right. When it's switched on in this way, the computer goes through a set of checks and resets itself to its factory settings. So, even if you have been personalising your computer, the R power on has reset it to its original condition. By the way, when you see the words RISC OS in the middle of your screen, you can let go of the R key. Thanks. 
So we're into Risk OS now. The mouse is working and we can see it's version 3.10 with a date of April 1992. And going into the task display, we can see that all of our two megabytes of memory is shown. So I think there's only one more test we need to do now. It's clear to see from these games that the A3010 definitely holds its own against its rivals. The Amiga 1200 certainly springs to mind. I'm really impressed with this machine and how well this particular one has turned out. I guess the last thing to do is go back to my primary school days. I'll have to excuse my flying skills. It's been a few years. Well, we've come a long way since we started. And remember, you did it all on your own. I hope I've shown you that there's nothing difficult about using your Acorn computer, even though, as I'm sure you'll realise, we've really only scratched the surface in these few short sessions. The important thing is that you have the confidence to experiment for yourself. Remember, it's very difficult to damage anything. And, providing you're only working on copies of your data and applications disks, the more you experiment, the more you'll learn. But that's the end of this guide, so I'll leave you now to save or quit from this draw page on your own. Wind this tape on to the end, and good luck with your Acorn computer.